This is Unity, and this is the most incredible coin flipping thing ever. All right, all right. It's just a regular one, but it's perfect if you're just getting started with Unity or you want to add some aspect of movement to your 2D game, such as flipping cards and things of that nature. This is right for you. It is straightforward, and it's it's beginner level. So I'm going to walk through it, all of the code, and my assets are in the description. Um, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead here and click on 2D for our game. And let's say, um, turn, no, turn, flip a coin. All right, is going to be what it's called because we're flipping a coin. And here we go. Here's Unity. Let's go ahead and pull this out. All right. So scenes, I'm going to change my scene name off the bat, and I just like calling it main scene for this. Okay, and what we need, make sure you have it on 16 by 9, all right? We're not going to be doing a ton with the camera, but 16 by 9 should be good. And then let's go ahead, I right click, and I'm going to go to UI, and then what I'm going to be adding here is a canvas. Okay, with that, I don't want a constant pixel size. I'm going to go ahead and say scale with screen. And now for the assets, right? For the sprites, what I'm going to need to do is go ahead and pull up where I store mine, which is in downloads, right? And I'm just going to highlight these two coins. All of the assets in this will be posted in the description. There's a link. So this is the back and front of a coin. And it happens to be the US half dollar. All right, let me go into scene mode here. And what I'm going to do is pull one of these up. And that's going to be our sprite. I'm going to go ahead and rename this coin. Okay. And I'll hit enter. And then I need to add a component. And what that will be is our, I'll say flip script. <laughs> flip the script. Uh, add create. And hopefully, there we are. Oop, this is all in scenes. I'm going to pull these guys out. I'm not going to really create separate folders since this is a smaller project. And here we are. Okay. I'm going to go ahead now, though, and boop, boop, just like that. Split screen. All right, what do we need in this? Well, first, we need more than one image for our sprite, right? Because the coin has two sides. So to do that, I'm just going to get rid of this stuff for now. I'm going to declare a public variable, a public array, which is going to be a sprite array. Anything you declare public when it's linked up, when it's a component of a game object, and our coin is a game object, it will pop up in the inspector. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. And so I'm going to name this sides. And so what I'm saying here is I have a public sprite array named sides. Well, let me go to my coin and, well, oh, got to save. There we are. And let's see if we flip back off. Give it just a sec to think. And there we are. All right. So now a size. Sides, sides. And that's why it says that. Now, how big is our array? I want two for the front and the back. And they're sprites. So I can click on this dot. The first one's going to be the front, and this one will be the reverse. Enter. There we are. So now we have two sprites. Now we're never going to see that second one, right? Because it's assigned here. The face is already assigned and staying there. So what we're going to have happen then, just to make sure it's going to be working, is let's do private void on mouse down is a method within Unity itself that is included. So, and it knows what we mean. When the person clicks on the object, what are you gonna do? Well, first, let's just test out that we can show that other index, show this other image. What we need, though, is to get the sprite renderer to do that. So the sprite renderer is what is rendering the sprite. It is what's responsible for showing us, for assigning that image. It handles the image. So we have this game object coin and this flip script, which is attached to it, which is a component of coin. But we still need to say, hey, coin, 
give us the sprite renderer. Give us that thing that controls your picture. So we can declare it here, right? We can say make this variable, but we can't explain what it is yet because we have to wait and make sure that there's actually a uh, running program. So to do that, to ensure that it is running before we ask the computer for the sprite renderer, because otherwise we would get an error, we need to do a private void wake function. And this just makes sure that once the program's up and going, once things are awake, then we will ask the computer the fancy stuff, which is to get the component. What component do we want? We want the sprite renderer. And now that will turn out right for us. The reason we're declaring it up here, the reason I name it, I make the sprite renderer variable up here is so everything can access it. But this is where I'm actually assigning what it is. And notice the lowercase s, that is why it is functioning. You couldn't have the same uppercase s. This is a standard variable. I could name this unicorns. I would just have to use unicorns down there. All right, now that we got the sprite renderer, we're gonna do sprite renderer dot sprite and what do we want to set this equal to i'm going to say sides one why am i saying sides one well let me save because element zero is the front element one is the back so take my sides array and assign it the second i mean the first element it would be the second thing but first element all right now i'm going to hit play and nothing's going to work so play and let me click away here why isn't it working ah uh, all i have to do now is to make sure this works is i need to add a collider without a 2d collider the computer isn't paying attention to if things are hitting this or if the mouse is pressed on it we need to say computer is anything colliding and so now i have added that let's give it a shot now and there we go and it's only going to change once right we're not uh we're not counting up or anything. We're just having it change once for now. So perfect. All right. Now we want that animation that I showed you, right? We want it to look like it's actually turning. So to do that, we need to ask the computer to pause and control time. So we need a subroutine. So I'm going to do an IE numerator, right? Wait. And wait's just what I'm calling it. I could call it wait please, right? And then I'm going to do float duration. I'm going to use a, the, this is the length of time we're pausing. And then float size. The reason I'm doing size is to control, to make that flip thing happen, to make it appear to happen, we are actually shrinking the size of our item. Oh yeah, we don't return a value yet. Um, so what we're gonna do to change that size, we're gonna do it in a loop. I'm gonna say wall, oop, and I need to control, nope, we have it. So wall size, so whatever the size is, right, it's gonna be past the current size and then the duration. So wall that current size, is greater than 0 0.1 because we're going to mush it. Why uh, size is also the size of of the y value. And I'll show you what I mean too. So while that current size is greater than 0, 1, what are we going to be doing? We're going to say size is equal to size minus 0 0.07 f. You have to put f on floats. That's the only Unity demands that, uh, C that Sharp does, all right? So, hey, we're gonna shrink down, we're taking away from size, and then we're gonna grab the transform.local scale, and the transformer is this thing, right? It controls position, rotation, and scale. So transform local scale, we need a new vector three, and what are we gonna set that vector three to look like? What's that size? Well, it's going to be the one. So standard there, no change in X size. So Y is what we're switching up, comma one, no change in Z. Okay. And then after I do this, after I make this small little takeaway size of 0 0.01, what do I want to do? Well, now comes in the yield return new wait for 
seconds. And notice that's going to light up green because it's a pre-made method within Unity itself. Duration. All right. And what's the duration? That's the variable that's been passed. That's the parameter where, that the user decides or we are going to decide. All right. So we're going to keep shrinking the size for a particular period of time. Once we are done with that, once I have smushed it on the Y axis, I'm going to go ahead and flip the render. So sprite render dot sprite is equal to sides. And then we need to count the flips of the coin over to, and let me explain that in a sec. Let me go ahead and scroll up here. So I need this variable uh, int flip count is going to be equal to zero. Okay. And then what this will do for us is it's going to start out equal to zero. And way down here, we're going to say flip count plus plus. And the reason for that is we are going to know which side of the coin to show based on lip count, flip count. This modulus operator, this is like division, right? It's flip count divided by two, except modulus means you're only going to get the leftovers, the remainder. So if flip counts equal to three, what this would return is three divided by two. Okay, so that's, well, that has a remainder of one, and that's what it would return, a one. Whereas if you had nine modulus seven, what would that return? Well, seven goes in there once and there's two left over. So that would return a two. Modulus returns the remainder. Well, if I am dividing by two, either, either, two goes into every other number, right? It's even, all even numbers. So that would return zero for the remainder. Oh, look, are zero elements the face? And then... I ask it to count up by one. So at six, it's zero. So it shows us the face. Add one. Oh, it's now seven. Seven, two goes in there three times. There's one left over. So it returns one and one is the other side. And so it's going to loop through the sides. So I slowly mush it down. I loop through to mush it down. I flip the face or I change the sprite. And then I'm going to use another wall loop. And I could do this within the same one using several different variables. I thought it was more clear for this purpose to just have the two separate ones, especially for those who are still getting comfortable with uh, the coding side of Unity. All right. And notice now, though, I'm saying if size is less than 0.99, because now it will grow, right? We flipped it. We're seeing the other size and I'm adding. So as long as it's less than that, what do I want to do? Well transform dot local scale equals new vector three one size size boom okay and now what well now i want to pause again yield return new wait for seconds how long same time duration make this a bit bigger Oh, what happened? Wait for... There we go. Wait for seconds duration. So, that's our wait. And here's our flip count count. And that's going to be counting us up, up, and away. Alright. So, this is looking good. Now, we don't have anything starting it. So, instead of this, what do we want? We are going to use the start coroutine wait please and then i need to put in my parameters so for my parameters first off they're both going to be floats i want this to be slow right i mean i want this to be fast it's a coin flip so i'm going to say zero i don't know one that might be too small and then let's do 1.0 for now on size so we're going to start with the standard size but i'm going to leave it as a float because it gives us leeway if we would like it Okay, right, this is looking good so far. Yep, let's go ahead. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to click over here and let's hit run. The only problem I see is it looks like the first time it just flips to its face again. It does. 
So let's go ahead then and start this at one. And that should take care of it. Boom, boom, boom. And we have a flipping coin. But uh it's kind of predictable though. You could also randomize the face, of course. But regardless, two-sided coin, and it actually looks like it's flipping. Obviously, this is super useful for making card games, which are great beginning games as well when you're just starting out with Unity. I am absolutely going to change the background color because big decisions. All right. One more try. Boom, boom, boom. Perfect. We have a magical coin of happiness. Hopefully this was useful. Hopefully you're going to put it into a larger game or you're just getting started with Unity and this was helpful to understand some of the basics. If you do something cool with it, let me know in the comments below. And if you're still watching this, make sure to hit like, make sure to hit subscribe. It gives me warm fuzzies. It solves something. World peace. I, I, I don't know. It's great. And yeah, I guess I'm going to flip the coin a few more times. Meh. Nah.